Hello and welcome to this week's midweek service. It's good to join with you wherever you are and wherever you're watching from. Today we are going to uh, sing some songs, we're going to pray and we're going to hear a reading uh, from Daniel chapter 7. If you'd like to find your Bible and find Daniel chapter 7, uh, it'll be wonderful if you'd read along with me. As we gather, let us pray. Lord, we worship you, we praise you and we thank you. You are the good God who is always with us, who lavishes us with such wonderful gifts. Thank you for your grace, that grace that's extended to all of us. Thank you that you are with us, that you care for us and that you minister to us in our hearts. And Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. We thank you for his life, death and resurrection. We thank you that he is with you, praying for us now, before the throne of God the Father. Lord, we're here to worship you, to give you glory and praise. Be glorified, I pray. Amen.
Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we seek your face. We seek your blessings. We seek your mercy and we seek your grace. Lord, we know that every good thing comes from you. We know that everything that we have belongs to you. We know that this world and everything in it is yours. And so, Lord, we pray for this world. We pray for the world in its brokenness. Lord, we ask for your mercy, for your help, where there are troubles, where there is conflict, where there is fighting, where there is oppression, where there is slavery. Lord, where there is no freedom. Lord, have mercy on us for our part, all of us, in making the world what it is today. For the bad things, for the bad choices that we have made, for where we have turned a blind eye to wrongs, where we have not acted with justice, where we have not loved mercy. And Lord, we continue to pray for our world in the midst of this pandemic. Lord, that you would help us, please help us. Lord, we thank you for the scientists and the doctors, the nurses, the other staff that are facilitating the vaccine rollout. But Lord, we see and look around the world and know that many countries don't have the same finance resource as we do. And I pray for them, Lord Jesus, that they would get the vaccines that they need to enable them to live freely. Lord, it's so tough. It's so difficult and not one of us would want to be a politician today. And so, Lord, we also pray for our politicians, especially as they lay out plans for the future, for how that we find our way out of this pandemic. And Lord, I pray for us as a nation, We've been so terribly hard hit by this virus with so many deaths but also so many associated issues particularly lord thinking about mental health issues though it's not exclusively that lord would you help us please help us as a country to get back on our feet and to move forward and lord i pray that through this you would bring good Lord, to me, that good may look like people turning to you. But Lord, for you, for your glory, for your fame and for your purposes, I pray. Lord, bring healing to this land. Bring renewal and bring restoration. Amen. Amen. Daniel chapter 7. Now the book of Daniel is uh, very famous for the stories of uh, Adrach, Meshach and Abednego who end up in the fiery furnace, uh, for Daniel who ends up in that lion's den and for the story where there is the hand which writes on the wall. But much of the book can be rather confusing and difficult for us to understand. So I'm going to have a look at Daniel chapter 7. I'm going to read the whole thing, but primarily talk about the first part. If you'd like to follow along with me, then wonderful. And if you keep your Bible uh, open, because uh, I will be referring to specific verses later on. Daniel chapter 7. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions passed through his mind as he was lying in bed. He wrote down the substance of this, his dream. Daniel said, In my vision at night I looked, and there before me were the four winds of heaven, churning up the great sea. Four great beasts, each different from the others, came up out of the sea. The first was like a lion. It had the wings of the eagle. I watched until its wings were torn off and it was lifted from the ground, so that it stood on two feet like a human being and the mind of a human was given to it. And there before me was a second beast, which looked like a bear. It was raised up on one of its sides, 
and it had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. It was told, get up and eat your fill of flesh. After that I looked, and there before me was another beast, one that looked like a leopard, and on its back it had four wings like those of a bird. The beast had four heads, and it was given authority to rule. After that in my vision at night I looked, and there before me was a fourth beast, terrifying and frightening and very powerful. It had large iron teeth. It crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. It was different from all the former beasts, and it had ten horns. While I was thinking about the horns, there before me was another horn, a little one, which came up among them, and three of the first horns were uprooted before it. This horn had eyes like the eyes of a human being, and a mouth that spoke boastfully. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. Then I continued to watch because of the boastful words the horn was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire. The other beasts had been stripped of their authority but were allowed to live for a period of time. In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. I, Daniel, was troubled in spirit, and the visions that passed through my mind disturbed me. I approached one of those standing there and asked him the meaning of all this. So he told me, and gave me the interpretation of these things. The four great beasts are four kings that will rise from the earth. But the holy people of the Most High will receive the kingdom and will possess it forever. Yes, forever and ever. Then I wanted to know the meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others and most terrifying, with its iron teeth and bronze claws. The beast that crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. I also wanted to know about the ten horns on its head and about the other horn that came up, before which three of them fell. The horn that looked more imposing than the others, and that had eyes and a mouth that spoke boastfully. As I watched, this horn was waging war against the holy people and defeating them, until the Ancient of Days came and pronounced judgment in favour of the holy people of the Most High. And the time came when they possessed the kingdom. He gave me this explanation. The fourth beast is a fourth kingdom that will appear on earth. It will be different from the other kingdoms and will devour the whole earth, trampling it down and crushing it. The ten horns are ten kings who will come from this kingdom. After them another king will arise, different from the earlier ones. He will subdue three kings. He will speak against the Most High and oppress his holy people and try to change the set times and the laws. The holy people will be delivered into his hands for a time, times and half a time. But the court will sit and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. Then the sovereignty, power and greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven will be handed over to the holy people of the Most High. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, 
and all rulers will worship and obey him. This is the end of the matter. I, Daniel, was deeply troubled by my thoughts, and my face turned pale, but I kept the matter to myself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God, and may he give us wisdom, insight, and understanding. The book of Daniel is full of all kinds of imagery, apocalyptic imagery. This is imagery which we don't understand. It's sort of looking beyond what we can see in this world to another realm, the realm of heaven, as it were. We don't see this uh, very often in the Old Testament. It was a bit in Ezekiel, maybe bits, pieces dotted around elsewhere. But the main times it arises in our Bible is in Daniel and the book of Revelation. These books, these uh, apocalyptic writings, are very difficult for us to understand because they're written with imagery that we don't have today. But to the people in Daniel's day, they would have had great meaning. For example, if you went to a rugby match, say Twickenham Stadium or something like that, to watch an international game, and somebody was stood there in a, at a red rugby top, and they had a picture of a red dragon drawn on their face. What would you think? What does it mean? What does the red mean? What does the dragon mean? You're probably well aware that this person is a supporter of the Welsh rugby team and that they are supporting Wales and want them to win. You knew that because you knew the symbols and what they meant. The issue is for us today, we don't fully understand the symbols in use by Daniel or in the book of Revelation. But we can still gain enough to appreciate this writings and to lead us in our worship of God. So the four beasts that rise up, we don't know exactly what they represent, though it is likely that the fourth one uh, represents the Romans. But these beasts, they are described as sort of hybrid animals. They're like, they're like a leopard with wings and uh, maybe it's an animal that stands upright and is given a human mind or ten horns. These are not normal animals. To the Jew of Daniel's day, they would have recognised these animals as being unclean animals. They are not right. If we were to re read the laws in the Old Testament, we would know that animals that aren't quite right, don't meet up to the normal standards, are unclean. And so these animals, where there's been completely crossing of species, are very unclean. And they are to be seen as such. However, we see something very interesting happening. If we read in verse 6, the one that looks like a leopard and has four wings, has four heads and was given authority to rule. It was given dominion. Who gave it the dominion? I don't know. I guess it was given by other beasts or animals. And these as representations of kings and of nations lead us to know that we're talking about people, people giving authority. But what happens? You see, these people are given authority. We've all been given authority. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. What does it say? Well, starting at verse 27, it says, God created mankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Rule, have authority, have dominion. And so these people are given authority to rule. They are given dominion. But they do awful things with it. Don't we all? We abuse the power that's presented to us. And so what happens? Verse 12, the beasts have been stripped of their authority. They may exist, but they don't have that God-given gift of authority 
of rule of dominion anymore. But then, verses 13 and 14, Daniel sees someone else coming, the Son of Man, coming on the clouds of heaven. He approaches the Ancient of Days, is led into his presence, and was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never pass be destroyed. Genesis 1 28 to have rule and authority and dominion will be fulfilled in this one the son of man who comes before the ancient of days. Who is this son of man? Well we may turn to the New Testament now Mark 14 verse 62 Jesus has been arrested and the high priest asked him are you the Messiah the son of the blessed one? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. That's who Jesus is. And after he has been crucified and raised from the dead, he meets with his disciples, Mark, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Back to Daniel chapter 7. The Son of Man, Jesus, given all authority, all power, all glory. Daniel's vision is a vision of Jesus coming and taking his rightful place, fulfilling the, uh, the command of Genesis 1.28 to rule and have authority. But Jesus does it perfectly. He does it absolutely perfectly. We can never achieve that. We are broken and marred by sin. But Jesus, he is the one with authority, with all power, with all dominion. Let us praise him and worship his holy name.
Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are the one with power, with authority, with dominion. Lord, we praise you and we give you the glory. And Lord, we look to you because we know that you are good and merciful and just. And we seek your face. Lord, let us praise you with reverence. Let us praise you with fear and awe. And Lord, we ask that you would come close. Have mercy. Watch over us. And bring us at the last to be with you forever and ever in your eternal kingdom. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. And don't forget Jesus. Amen. Goodbye.